it's a futurist idea but it's built on on uh, i mean older ideas i mean every court had an astrologer <laughs> in, yeah, in them. So i mean had a, uh, john d in 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 uh, uh, England and uh, he he was famous for his crystal ball and and and, uh, and everything. So it's in, it's an old dream um, among the, the ruling class to to be able to to understand and uh, uh, see into the future. This is Catherine Johansson from Upstream Media. Today I have with, you, with me Jakob Nordengard from Sweden. And we're going to talk about his newest book, The Digital World Brain. But first, would you shortly introduce yourself and your background, uh, Jakob? Yeah, yes, um, I have a PhD in uh, technology and social change and uh, uh, a master in geography and uh, a master in uh, culture and media production. And uh, I've written, um, I think this is the, the sixth book that I've written now. And, uh, uh, and um, I wrote, for example, about uh, European biofuel policy in my uh, doctoral thesis. And uh, I've written a lot about uh, the history of uh, climate change politics and also the background to, to the pan pandemic. Yeah, that yeah, time. that's the book we talked about in our last interview yeah, exactly. with the global coup d'etat. Yeah. Uh, and uh, when did this, come, this book come out, The Digital World Brain? When did it um, come out? It came out just before, um, in December, um, before Christmas. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, December the 11th. Uh, I usually publish my books in December. But <laughs> <laughs> for some reason? For some reason, I don't know. Uh, yeah. I think it's uh, because uh, uh, I'm usually very creative during the autumn. And uh, okay. uh, yeah. so I uh, almost I managed to, to make a book. And uh, when I have completed the book, uh, I... <laughs> I don't have a uh, creativity <laughs> left. So, yeah, uh, for a while at least. Maybe. On on, uh, on uh, Christmas and uh, <laughs> New Year's even. Uh, yeah, but but the book is written in Swedish. And do you have any plans uh, for a translation of this uh, book? Yes, in it, the it, near future. Uh, um, parts of it is, is translated uh, because uh, I wrote the book as a uh, and published it as a blog posts. And uh, I, have, I have an English blog, so okay. yeah. some, some chapters are um, yeah, published in English. Uh, and of course, when you do the book, the, the finished book, it's uh, you change things from yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, the blog post and, and things. Yeah, but and, we. But I, but I've. Uh, um, I hope that we, this will be out in a couple of months in English as well. Okay, and we can also place a link to your English blog uh, under this video uh, on our channel so people can find the material. But uh, right now, uh, you know, we um, this the book, it takes its point of departure in a United Nations report from Antonio Guterres, the General Secretary of the United Nations yeah. from September 2021, and it's called Our Common Agenda. And that's what uh, your book takes its point of departure actually from this report. But could you start by explaining at an overall level what our common agenda is and how it's connected to Agenda 2030? Well, I, I can just uh, quote Antonio Guterres. Uh, what he said in a speech. Our common agenda is first and foremost a booster shot for the SDGs. And that's interesting with uh, uh, he, he, he says booster shot because I mean, uh, this our common agenda, uh, it was decided just before after the, the pandemic uh, had been declared. Um, we had this, uh, of course, the Great Reset um, initiative, Guterres and uh, Klaus Schwab, and also. Uh, 
Now, nowadays, King Charles III, <laughs> they declared this and said, we have to do something. We have to restart uh, the world, more or less. And just a couple of months later, in, in September uh, 2020, uh, they have a, a meeting at the United Nations a, a Global Governance Summit. Uh, and they decide after that, that um, or the member states decides in the General Assembly that uh, the Secretary General Guterres uh, has to do this uh, report uh, for the future in order to strengthen uh, the United Nations so that the uh, United Nations are better uh, fit to take care of uh, global challenges. Because one thing with the pandemic, it was uh, a lot of countries made uh, different things, and then and now they want a more, uh, a better and a more uh, one. We talk about one health approach, and then uh, so so they they want to to speak with one voice. <laughs> and, but uh, do, you, do you know if this wish for a global governance uh, it comes before COVID? I mean, do you know if there has been plans for this also before this global challenge of COVID? Yeah, yes, yes, of course, because it's it's. Uh, I mean, when we had this meeting in September, uh, this global governance. Uh, summit. Uh, this had been prepared for a couple of years. Uh, so you and you can go back to the 90s if you want to to have roots to this. And uh, especially uh, a report that was uh, uh, done for the trilateral commission called Beyond Interdependence. And if you, you read that, you can find a lot of these suggestions that comes in the, our common agenda uh, was already there. And well, uh, well, now that you're saying that, what is the relation between the Trilateral Commission and the United Nations? Just shortly, because we've talked about it before, but just yes. shortly. Uh, the thing is, we had the Brundtland Report in 1987. Grohallen Brundtland the Norwegian former prime minister, uh, she was a member of a trilateral commission. And uh, we also find in this report, more is strong. He was also a member of a trilateral commission and uh, a couple of others uh, that were in this commission. And uh, just after uh, the our uh, common future, but uh, the Brundtland report was called, um, the main author uh, and uh, Maurice Strong and uh, a couple of others uh, was uh, uh, commissioned by the Trilateral Commission to do this beyond interdependence. So you can say it's like a follow up mm -hmm. of the, the Our Common Future report. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it contains an action plan on how to achieve sustainable development or but, but the, the trilateral commission is like a it's a think tank isn't it it's a yeah. like yes it's a think tank uh, that was founded by uh, david rockefeller and uh, uh, spigner bershinsky in 1973 but um, it's not it's not really something that we all should be governed by is it i mean do they have any legal <laughs> no, no 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 i mean this is uh, very influential business people and uh, and involved in in uh, i mean banking and uh, financial institutions uh, and um, so it's, it's a private initiative uh, yeah, because so, many so, many people they fail to understand how an organization, also like the World Economic Forum, uh, how they can influence politicians and na nation states uh, to the degree that they actually can, because they think if they don't have any uh, jurisdiction, yeah, if they don't um, have any jurisdiction, um, people t uh, they tend to think that uh, they don't have influence. So this thing about understanding how does influence actually work, uh, I think that's quite important. Yeah, I mean, people I mean, should know about lobbyism, 
We have it all the time. I mean, yeah. uh, in, in Brussels, there's so many lobbyists everywhere and they are uh, constantly uh, having meetings with the parliamentarians and everything and the commission. And it, it's it's always about influence from these forces. And the more power and more money you have, the more influence you have. It's yeah. as simple as that. Yeah, so it's tied to money and power and I guess also intellectual influence. That's what people also forget. They forget yeah. the, the intellectual part of the influence. Um, but I want to ask you also, now that uh, we're pointing towards our common agenda, does all of this mean that uh, in the EU we are going to experience an increased focus again on the sustainability goals and the goals and the climate crisis in uh, governmental policies and law now that COVID is not so much in the picture anymore? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, I mean, uh, and if, if if we go back to 2019, uh, a lot of, uh, of uh, the European Union's climate policy and the energy packages, everything was prepared at that time. And we could see during 2020 when everything everybody was scared about the, the pandemic. Uh, they uh, they pushed this through this uh, climate agenda in the European Union. Yeah. So so now we just continue with this, and, and, uh, and this, this also goes through uh, legis legislation, doesn't it? Um, yes. The agreement of 2020. Yes. Um, so um, I mean, climate is the backbone. Of the whole agenda it's yeah. so important that yeah. is kind of religion so you think it's more important than something such as covid and pandemics and the what they call the constant threat of new pandemics and yeah but pandemics are a, a part of this of course uh, health is very important i would say that uh, health that's about us uh humans mm -hmm. and the climate that's about the planet yeah i, I mean i've followed this since uh I, I wrote this book the rockefeller controlling the game or uh, uh in swedish it was a climate smart history climate smart historia um so i followed how they have uh, worked with this since uh, at least the 50s uh, it's way before that but it was very obvious that uh, climate change uh, they wanted to to control the resources of the world mm -hmm. and climate change is uh, it's of course connected it's connected to energy energy resources and they wanted to control the human resources of the world and that's where health comes in yeah because it's also interesting that just after the covid crisis there is an increased focus on energy shortages and food shortages and that fits pretty well also into the the climate agenda so that sort of supports the idea of moving even further and faster and focusing on on this climate problem uh, it's interesting how that problem with energy and food it increased during and after covid yes do you have an idea why it became uh, such a problem besides from the Nord Stream and the Russian uh, war uh, with Ukraine do you yeah, have an idea? Yeah. Yeah, but the thing is we have had climate policies uh, that has uh, I mean in my country Sweden, we had kind of the best, one of the best energy systems in the world. And, and I remember this from um, um, when I wrote my, my some of my student papers uh, like 20 years ago, that it was like, oh, Sweden, we have uh, compared to, to a lot of other countries in, in Europe, we have such a good energy system. It's sustainable but what had ha has happened is that uh, because of the climate policies we have uh, yeah scrapped the old 
power plants and uh and we we have uh and and so, some i mean sweden has a, a better situation of course than, than germany so germany uh, i mean it's the center of of europe it's the most important economy and they have scrapped the the coal power plants the nuclear power plants everything uh, that makes them uh, uh, self sufficient yeah so what you, what you're talking about is the nuclear power plants also in sweden Yes. Um, that, yeah. yeah. That are not. They're not. Uh, you know, Bashebeck. <laughs> Sorry. You know, Bashebeck. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, of course, that I was, remember. Uh, uh, hated among. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah, uh, but I heard also Elsa Bidding talk, talking about the the nuclear power plants that that have been uh, uh, stopped or destroyed yes. or, uh, um, in Sweden, and um, yeah, so that that is maybe. So, so, yeah. And, and that's that's a part of it because uh, then you have to rely on on uh, wind and solar, exactly. <laughs> and and you have to I mean you have to have backup power for that. Yeah, and, and that's so, what so they uh... created this problem, and and especially in Germany. And uh, so yeah, before this happened with uh, Ukraine and everything. Uh, it was this problem, energy vendor. It's it's just uh, I find it uh, stupid uh, to do this. And, yes, uh, but it's but it's increasing. I mean, this whole agenda and uh, moving into solar power and wind power for everything. It's it's increasing. It's uh, enforced. It's reinforced right now uh, with the, also yeah. the agreement yeah. that we have to have net zero emission by twenty fifty. So it's pretty serious, and it's, it's it's something that really all citizens should understand much more about, don't you think? Yes, uh, yes, they have to know how energy works. Yes, mm -hmm. and and uh, unfortunately, uh, we have pol politicians in, in leading positions that don't seem to understand this basic stuff. And uh, that's because we have uh, had uh, uh, all these activist people, but don't understand how this works, because they believe in utopia. Mm -hmm. uh, and and when you analyze uh, what has happened uh, since uh, Ukraine and everything, we have, uh, you know, Exxon Mobile. Yeah. They have raised their profits. Uh, I, I think it's like forty billion dollars or something like that. It is and and we also have this um, um, uh, Qatar country in the Middle East that is mm -hmm. have uh, huge natural gas deposits. Um, they have signed contracts with Germany now. Uh, to uh, uh, I mean, to um, uh, because yeah. of uh, the Russian because of the gas, sanctions, our sanctions against, against Russia. Yeah. yeah, and you know what Qatar has done before. Um, they are behind uh, uh, a lot of these wind park projects mm -hmm. Mm? in Sweden. Um, and uh, I suppose they have been in Denmark as well and, and uh, Germany because they know if we uh, uh, give money to wind parks and influence policy for this uh, we know that it won't uh, the wind <laughs> don't blow every time so, uh, so we can sell uh, the backup power that's natural gas. Uh, that's uh, what these big uh, energy corporations uh, do at this time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, so very smart. Yeah. But it, it's amazing that there isn't more debate about this, uh, about the, the problems that can occur when uh, we're trying to uh, change everything to into solar energy and wind energy and the the way that it it cannot be as functional, and also that uh, the whole the whole idea of the welfare system. I mean, it's it's built upon fossil fuels. Uh, yeah. It's not, it's not so easy, and it's a very short time also time frame for the transition. 
um so it's it, yeah it's very important to um to understand, to understand energy and how yeah. energy works yes yeah so um, uh, aside aside from energy which is so uh, important there's also a digital side to all of this that is also important to understand more of uh, because we're in the midst of uh, a technological revolution as they say in the world economic forum and uh, in this whole common agenda there's also a big role that technology plays i mean digital technologies so uh, could you mention an example of, of that, of how digital technologies are going to support this whole transition and the, the so-called common agenda? Uh, yeah, uh, Guterres talks about, he has uh, uh, this uh, talk about the global digital compact. So he wants everyone on uh, this planet to be connected to the internet. Everyone should be digital. Because if you're digital, you can also, um, I mean, you gain data about people. And, and, uh, mm -hmm. uh, how, and you can uh, collect everything that people are doing. Uh, I mean, you have a mobile phone, you can follow how people uh, travel and everything. And, uh, and, uh, and also... Uh, follow the uh, behavior, uh, opinions people have on uh, the social platforms and everything. It's a lot of uh, data that uh, they want. Uh, and this data can be used. And that's the whole idea behind this. Yeah. Uh, but isn't there a lot of like <clears throat> law making that... Um hinders the the ability to collect the the data like uh, is it possible to take data from from the doctor's office from the municipality from i mean from all these different sources or is uh, is there also going to be data protection laws maybe uh, for the individual to to ensure our digital human rights <laughs> or is yeah. there something called digital human rights <laughs> yeah yeah and mm -hmm. we talk talk a lot about these things as well, of course. Uh, so, uh, I mean, and we have had it uh, before. And the thing is, they they also, um, um, I mean, when you check in on a, on a website today, you always get these uh, options. Do you want? And and you check boxes all the time. Yeah, and uh, and it and after a while it's oh yeah. don't oh it's so <laughs> I just <sighs> give in or wh yeah. whatever because it's more easy. Yeah. So, so I, I think that's the way. I mean, um, they have to have these laws, but it's very easy to to get behind this. Also. Yeah, we know uh, that also when we do something with the bank or when we're starting with a new bank, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> um, then we have to sign <laughs> long contracts. Um, uh, and and I, I guess no one really reads these contracts. Or it can be if you buy a new device, actually, if you buy a new iPad, <laughs> uh, you also have to sign a uh, long, yes. long text. And, yeah, um, so, you so you have it written. It's uh, <laughs> it's rules. Yeah. And, 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 and then you agree to it all the time. Yeah, you have to agree because yeah. if you don't agree, you don't really, I mean, you don't really have an option to not agree. Because that's also the new digital idea that we got in Denmark called the uh, My ID. Um, you also have to sign a very, very long text. But if you don't, you cannot do anything. Yeah. So you don't. I mean, it's, it's the exact thing. We have the, the bank ID in Sweden. Yeah. That's yeah. very interesting as well because it's the banks that <laughs> gave us this. And uh, I think that tells us about uh, who's the ruler of this whole operation. Yes. Yeah, and that, that's also another part uh, aspect of what power is. 
that lies in these uh, digital systematizations that many people also don't really understand. I mean, maybe many people have an, a little bit of an old fashioned way of understanding what power is. And that could be one reason that uh, they don't uh, look through what's actually happening. I mean, um, so, so this awareness about what is di digitality and how, how does it change everything is also important to develop. And yes. yeah. yeah. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah. People have a, a, an old-fashioned view about uh, power, of course. So, so we are not prepared for this. Yeah, and uh, that that also brings me to the next question about yeah. uh, how this digital system that you're talking about could also be tied to to something such as money and economy. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. What they are testing now. And what we are talking about in a lot of uh, the working groups of the World Economic Forum and uh, and also in the United Nations system. I mean, we have uh, the, the I mean, World Bank and the IMF and the, uh, all these people, uh, they are discussing uh, plans for uh, CBDC or central bank digital currency. And that's digital money. I mean, we have digital money uh, yeah. in a lot of ways uh, today, but uh, but in this case, it will be connected directly to the central bank. And this money um, will be, I mean, it's trackable. You can see uh, the government will know everything you purchase and then and, and, and you're doing. Um, they can follow you everywhere. And... Uh, also, the money will be programmable. Mm -hmm. you can program it to, uh, to so you can only buy uh, so uh, stuff or uh, purchase things that uh, they decide you can have. And uh, if it's things that they don't think you should have, <laughs> they can deny access to it. And uh, they can also um, make it. Uh, your banking card won't work uh, uh, outside uh, an uh, area that's more. Uh, I I uh, I know that they were discussing this in France during the pandemic, so that you wouldn't be able to 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 use your money uh, within a distance of of uh, thirty kilometers from your home mm, because mm. of COVID. Because of COVID, yeah. so so they it will give them options. Uh, when uh, and when a crisis comes, they can use it, and uh, and they can use this. Uh, I mean, it's uh, it's a very uh, it's a weapon that hits very hard. But you, who is who in, is it that has this power? Who? To yeah, to make these uh, like uh, decisions of what how you can use your money, who who will be in control? Well, this I mean, it's 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 CBDC. It's the central banks. It's so it's the central banks. They're actually gaining more, more power, and they will follow uh, rules, of course. I mean, and it can be connected to uh, the sustainability development goals. Mm -hmm. The SDG. And, uh, what and if, yeah. So so if you uh, and then it might be in the future that you get a quota. This is your carbon quota. This is what you can spend, because one one thing is also that um, you can have an expiration uh, expiration uh, time. So you can only use use this money for a month. <laughs> and then you have to have new money. Um, so it's it's a powerful tool uh, in order to to achieve the the agenda 2030. But how is it connected to the agenda 2030 and to the United Nations? Because when you're explaining it like that, it's it, it, there must be different parties collaborating. Uh, yes, it is. we have working groups, and and uh, uh, that I mean. If you look into um, 
uh, United Nations project called um, and 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 United Nations IMF the World Bank it's part of the, the, this uh, international system um, and they ha also have this uh, it's called the codes yeah exactly it was a project um, initiated by the United Nations and presented um, during uh, the Stockholm plus 50 conference it was uh, last year in June and uh, if you look into uh, the working groups and and uh, the projects that uh, are in this codes initiative and codes is um, uh, I have to check. <laughs> coalition for Digital Environmental Sustainability. Mm -hmm. It's a coalition. So you find uh, a lot of, um, I mean, you have uh, United Nations institutions, of course, but you also find other uh, actors in this. You can find uh, the Ant Group, for example. You know what the Ant Group is? No, would you explain that? It, it's China's social credit system. It was developed by the Ant Group. Okay. Uh, and they have started an initiative called Every Action Counts as well. Um, every Action Counts. So that means what you're doing, what you're purchasing and everything. Uh, and it's... Um, so the United Nations, we work with this. And it's, it's being used in China right now, is it so? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. And, and, and if you go and uh, what I did was what's behind this uh, digital agenda? How did it come about? You find that uh, the, they had this report. Um, I think it was released in 2019 uh, called The Age of Digital Connectivity or something like that. They, uh, Guterres and the United Nations, we had commissioned Melinda Gates from Berlin, uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and Jack Ma from the Alibaba Group. Uh, and that's the, uh, that's the company that's behind Ant Group. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, so it's not just done in the United Nations system. They hire people from outside. And, and that's the, the part of this whole new idea uh, that has come with um, the partnership between World Economic Forum and, uh, and the United Nations. And uh, I mean, it was formalized in mm -hmm. 2019, but it yeah. has been, become, uh, it was started uh, way before that. So they are uh, very much uh, in bed with this uh, uh, big influential forces, business and and uh, financial institutions and banks. So uh, yeah, and I, th I think it could be good for ordinary people to understand what is the role of the nation state uh, and the the law in the nation state and uh, the democracy of the nation state uh, in relation to all of this, like. Uh, do ordinary citizens, do they know about our common agenda? Do they know about the code's action plan? And uh, is there any is there any uh, possibility to uh, to vote or to have any kind of influence as citizens or as a nation state on this development? Yeah, uh, I mean, the nation states, uh, they are part of the UN system. Uh, they are the members of United Nations. Mm -hmm. So of course they are involved in, in uh, uh, this, our common agenda. And um, so I think tomorrow, uh, Antonio Guterres will, will uh, talk about our common agenda, what's been achieved and, uh, and the plans ahead. And there we find these uh, member states involved. And uh, for example, we have uh, Sweden and Rwanda, uh, that is uh, uh, a part of, uh, that has to do with the digital agenda, uh, digital go global compact and so on. So you have nation states involved in, in, uh, in United Nations that are working with this. Um, but it's, I mean, it's, it's, um, 
it's not like the, the people of these nation states has anything to, to say about this. Um, and they don't actually know anything about it because nobody tells them. I mean, it, it's a very um, big step uh, from, I mean, we now have, I mean, the national uh, politicians, uh, those in government and uh, those involved in, in, uh, uh, in the diplomatic services, they are not connected to the people. Uh, and and they are working. Uh, I mean, it's it's a career. Uh, I mean, we, we yeah. see it with every um, Swedish and Danish politicians. They, they uh, uh, when we have uh, worked for a while in government, um, where they get a, a new job in the Commission and uh, or the United Nations. Yeah. That's a career way. Yeah, uh, they are not connected to to ordinary people. Uh, yeah. I don't think they work for ordinary people. They just say that they do it when it's election time. But but um, but otherwise, they they are part of of, uh, of what can say uh, an international jet set, the club. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, United Nations diplomats they represent a country, but we work uh, for the United Nations, and they have such I mean privileges. They can yeah. fly in business class all over the world, and and uh, and they have uh, don't have to pay taxes where they we do, and uh, they have a lot of of, of things that uh, makes them more think about United Nations um, and uh, your own national states not that important anymore. Yeah. But I'm also thinking about something such as a, a digital uh, central bank digital currency. I mean, it, that's quite a huge step. Uh, it changes a lot when uh, the 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 basic monetary politics is going to be changed, and it's probably also difficult to implement it in different nation states. Uh, but this whole move towards it is, I mean. Uh, does that have any kind of uh, democratic um, features, or I mean, do we even do people even know this? That's uh... no, no. I, I can't find anything about it. Um, I mean, it's it's nothing. Uh, I mean, we had an election in Sweden uh, last autumn, and mm -hmm. did they mention anything about uh, um, we we have to? Um, we, we will test this with CBDC. Do you think it's okay? <laughs> Nobody asked that question. Yeah. And, uh, and the thing is, what we're doing with uh, with money and cash. I mean, uh, they do. They don't uh, take away cash. Uh, we still have cash, but yeah. we can't use it. <laughs> it's yeah. more, so more much uh, difficult. You can't. Uh, you can't buy a beer on you know, on a pub. Uh, they don't take um, cash anymore in Sweden. Uh, a few pl a few places do this, but but it gets expensive for for uh, for all these uh, um, businesses to to handle uh, cash. So so they don't say no. Uh, uh, and if we have it in law. You will be able. You you have. We have to have cash as well, but. It's impossible to use, and and the United Nations they have uh, actually a project called Better Than Cash Alliance, mm -hmm. and, and that's um, that's towards um, the developing countries of the world, uh, those countries that I mean a lot of people don't have bank accounts. So so that's one of the uh, uh, things with this. They they want to everyone to have a bank account more or less, and. So they want to digitalize uh, third world countries. Is that yeah, what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, that, that's, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we in the West uh, will pay a lot of money to to digitize the, the rest of the world, and and that's one thing also. Why do the United Nations have this program? Working with this, I mean, this isn't uh, what uh, United Nations was supposed to do. What's yeah, it? exactly. Because so, that's that's my next question. Is it, is it a part of a UN charter? So yeah, exactly. 
But that's also what I wanted to ask you, that this change that is happening with the United Nations. And, and now, uh, according to your book, they're talking about global governance. But uh, And we are already talking about what lies in this concept of global governance. But um, would you elaborate a little bit on that? I mean, uh, shouldn't it, if, if the UN should be an institution of global governance, shouldn't there be a vote in each country, in each member country? Yes, um, yeah, I, I think so. Um, it would be for the public to decide, because now it's uh, it's the diplomats in in uh, in the United Nations that represents the countries that that uh, have a say, and I know there have been some uh, um, uh, what are going to say problems in the process for um, Guterres. And that is that uh, some member states in the G77 group and China, they have um, they have said that um, we think that some part of this agenda is premature, and uh, that uh, we the United Nations is an intra-governmental organization, and uh, we think that the member states will have the last say in these issues. But instead, they want to transform this system so that uh, United Nations uh, bureaucracy uh, calling the shots instead. So, so it's, a, it's a huge uh, power shift that comes with this, if, if, they, uh, if they agree on this. But uh, I think they eventually will do this yeah. is, it will be in negotiations now for uh, uh, for a couple uh, couple of years before so that's, uh, yeah that, yeah that leads also to the next question because uh, are we moving towards an unavoidable increase of centralization of power through these strategies of agenda 2030 and uh, our common agenda i mean is this uh, is it unavoidable like that we're moving towards this kind of centralization, global centralization. Of yeah, power. yeah. I, I mean, everything is pointing in that direction. I think, and uh, I can find it. Um, if it had been more uh, disagreements uh, within the, the United Nations and, and the, the nation, uh, the member states, but but um, I don't find find that. Uh, so I mean, in the in the big within the big uh, questions uh, that uh, United Nations is running, I mean, there there seem to be an agreement, and uh, there is an agreement about uh, Agenda Twenty Thirty. Yeah, and and we, they stay. I mean, it, it's decided by the member states. <laughs> One hundred ninety-two main member states of United Nations, I think, is that. Uh, so. So that it's their agenda. So of course they don't say no. And and also we don't find, um, I mean, we should have a Russian representative that says, no, we don't want to agree with this. We think it's uh, a bad policy and everything. But no, um, they are they are in on it. They are working in this uh, on this. And if you follow what's happening in the BRICS countries, the BRICS summit. I mean, it's a lot of people in the alternative uh, communities that talks about it's a power shift and the BRICS countries and and they do they have this um, new system and uh, it's to yeah. compete with the West and everything. But if you if you read the statements from uh, from the BRICS summits, they have an allegiance to the United Nations and Agenda Twenty Thirty. Uh, this is important to to fulfill this. So uh, you, you, official policy um, all the time yeah, is that uh, Agenda 2030 is is important, and they also talk about uh, the new revolution, digitization to to achieve this. Yeah, it's everywhere. Yeah, it's everywhere. Yeah. Um, now in your book, uh, the title is. The digital world brain. This is my translation, but that's what your title means. Yes. And so you're actually, in a way, developing 
this concept of the digital world brain uh, that's very interesting and it in in my view it moves to a little a little a more abstract level to understand this digital uh, world brain but would you uh, try attempt to explain a little bit more what do you mean about the digital world brain well it's uh i mean the brain i mean first of all we have this uh this planet with all uh, all people all things and everything and uh, through digital means, Internet of Things, Internet of Us, everything gets connected to, to a big network. And uh, in the middle of this network, you have this main server, <laughs> uh, the brain. Uh, that's uh, where uh, the direction for, for this uh, uh, big network comes from. Uh, that's the deciding mechanism. And uh, we can have people. Uh, we have, of course, overseers, but it's people that decides on the policies that uh, will be in this uh, digital new world. And, uh, and But we also have uh, technology to take care of it all. And the concept of a world brain is 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 this derived from H.G. Uh, Wells, the science fiction author. He wrote a book in 1938 called The World Brain, and uh, uh, a lot of his his ideas uh, is being realized with uh, this. So I have followed this. I followed this from uh, in in my Rockefeller book, and uh, also mentioned these things in in uh, uh, the Global Coup d'État. Um, so it's a realization of, of a, an old dream, and uh, and they talk about kind of creating a world organism. Um, and uh, you, as a person, is just a cell in this world organism, and uh, so and you can't. I mean, if you are in a body, you can't do anything else. You have to to obey the laws of of the body. <laughs> so the brain and uh if you don't do you you are cancer and you have to be cut away so uh, and, and that's the it's a very collective uh idea collectivist idea to to include but, but, but the body is organic and it follows organic principles so uh, yeah. the, the body of a digital world brain uh cannot follow organic um no, principles no. No, it's artificial. <laughs> yeah, it's artificial. You even uh, talk in your book about a digital copy of the world. What do you mean by that? Yeah, we have um, we have developed uh, uh, concepts or projects, uh, especially in the European Union. Also, we have uh, spent billions of euro uh, on uh, on building replicas of uh, the earth system and uh, so that you it's like a digital crystal ball that you uh, and and you and, and you connect uh, you have you get a, a a digital replica of yourself an avatar uh, mm -hmm. that is and you can connect it to to everything that you do in the real world so 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 this digital a uh, crystal ball uh, you can analyze you can monitor things you can analyze and you can can also um, see that okay we have to uh, we can see something bad is developing in this region and, and or these people are plotting for something uh, so so uh, we can and we can almost see into the future um, because this is a very futurist uh, idea it is uh, um, and and uh, interestingly enough, it's, it's I mean it's a futurist idea, but it's built on on uh, I mean older ideas. I mean every court had an astrologer. <laughs> in, yeah, in the, that's true. I mean had a, uh, John Dee in 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 
uh, England and uh, he, he was famous for his crystal ball and and, and, uh, and everything. So it's, in, it's an old dream um, among the, the ruling class to, to be able to, to understand and uh, uh, see into the future. Yeah, that, it's very interesting. There's this uh, anticipatory element in it. Yeah. I, I want to ask you also the like, uh, what are the basic elements of this um, of this world or this copy of the world? Since it it cannot be cells or it, uh, you, you know, it's um, it would be data, right? Yeah. So what is yeah. the role of data, and can you elaborate also a little bit of, on that? You also write a little bit about it in your in your book what is the role of i mean what what does a human being become in this world brain it becomes a thing yeah it becomes uh i mean i, I have uh, uh it's interesting to 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 uh, look in this uh, report our common agenda because they have also pictures about uh, um, how we just become a mechanical parts of this uh, and uh, the idea is for us to to function like in in a factory. That's that's, that's the thinking. So um, and and uh, do it as efficiently as possible. And uh, data can also you it it becomes um, uh, possible to to manipulate and and uh, steer behavior and everything. Um, so and it's a it's a very mechanistic thinking, I would say. Because yeah. our profiles, they will consist of data, digital data, right? Yeah. But but I guess um, there is more in the world than data, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> I mean, As... it, they, they don't understand the, the, what, what, is, what is a human, what yeah. is emotions, what is consciousness, and all these exactly. It's not a part of this. Uh, they say that uh, they talk. I mean, even Klaus Schwab he, he mentioned this. We have to make sure that uh, uh, we don't um, make robots of, of uh, humanity. He says those things, and but it's like no, they don't really understand, and and that, that's one one of the things. But uh, they think they can create an artificial intelligence it's not intelligent <laughs> it's nothing there no. <laughs> it's just, but, but it must be a part of that uh, digital world brain i mean the the yeah. artificial development of what they call artificial intelligence right must yeah. be a part of that um so it can actually maybe calculate or the, it has some functions that are more advanced that than what we are yeah, using it can calculate very fast of yeah. course yeah, yeah. But it can't feel. <laughs> so, so humans actually There's become. Love. There's nothing that's humane. Yeah. It's just cold. Yeah, and so calculated. So humans, <laughs> they become data that are calculated into different kinds of contexts. Uh, yeah. And, 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 and then, then we're talking about scoring boards. Yeah. Uh, the nations. So, so everything will have a scoring board so that you can see that you. Are sustainable or not everything is about your data <laughs> nothing is, is about you as a person uh, that's not yeah. important and then you can just shortly we're not going to talk long about that but uh, as a phil philosophy of science question <laughs> um i mean is it is it adequate to measure the world just through computation and mat mathematics <laughs> <laughs> um, i think you have an answer on that no it isn't i mean uh, it, of course, it's helpful to uh, uh, in certain tasks. It's good to have uh, to be able to calculate and everything. It, it goes fast and everything. Yeah, I mean, you can can be a helpful thing, but mm. you can't. Uh, I mean, when it comes to to the human parts, and and, and also uh, they have these ideas to to more or less robotize everything, and they have a a teacher that it's like an artificial intelligence. I mean. I mean, we have so much, I mean, the human intellect, human brain is so much more. It's so much more advanced than, than any of these uh, uh, systems. 
uh, and yeah. uh, it's it's impossible to to uh, I mean copy that. Why why do you we think that? Understand uh... how how we uh, actually function. Yeah. So it's impossible. It's it's yeah. just a, it's a it's just a dream. It's a utop utopian uh, or dystopian dream that it's it's impossible to achieve this in the end. I think. But but why do you think that so many people can can become uh, totally immersed into this idea of uh, the computer and mathematics and artificial intelligence as sort of like all encompassing uh, uh, when it comes to understanding the whole world, like. Uh, like computer models that are telling us that we had this climate change problem or computer models, models that are calculating that we have a pandemic, that <laughs> yeah. are cal calculating that uh, so many people are going to die. And then reality doesn't show the, the same thing. Mm. Uh, but but it's actually becoming um, like you, you say yourself, like godlike. But why do you think so many people cannot see what you just said about humaneness or uh, aspects of life that cannot be calculated and all of this why do you think it's so foreign to so many people now i, I think it's just if you watch a movie from like uh, 50 years ago or even in the 90s and compare it to what you see today it's like the human company, company also, that, that part of that it's humane is lost. And, and, um, and we see it everywhere in the society. And I think it's a, lot, a lot of things has happened since, since we got uh, internet. And, uh, and we have all, all this propaganda all the time telling us this. And... Uh, because we are so in love with our gadgets, we are we are there all the time. We are um, talking to a screen like I'm doing now, and um, and uh, so a lot of people they don't they're not connected to to the real world anymore. And and it's I mean uh, young people they we hardly know we don't know if internet don't function a day they they, they get panicked yeah. <laughs> what, yeah, what should i do <laughs> so um so it's a, it's a sad state uh, for the world but but i think uh, i mean of course inside uh, you just have we just have to tell people and and uh, make them see these things yeah. yeah. Uh, because we, we have uh, we have been brainwashed for a long, long, long time to to and to not to to trust ourselves and uh, and to trust the, the gut feeling for things and uh, intuition and uh, it's just don't trust yourself, don't trust what you what you see and, and uh, it's all about uh, what the experts say. Mm. And and uh, I mean, it's very common when you ask. Uh, I, for example, is very interested in the built environment and architecture, and, and I've, I've been thinking a lot about how how this. Uh, I don't like the, the the new architecture, the modernist style, and everything because I think it makes me feel ooh, bad. Uh, it's it's not alive anymore. But, but if you ask a lot of people, especially people that are educated, and uh, what do you think about that? And, and, and a lot of them are just, um, how am I supposed to, what am I supposed to say here? Uh, what what did what have they said on TV about this? Uh, what have the experts said? Uh, they don't trust themselves anymore. It's just... Um, but it's. I think it's interesting. Uh, just that we have this segment with well uh, educated people. But, but it's if you go to to the bottom <laughs> with people, they have been so. I mean, uh, <laughs> the man has always. Uh, we have never trusted the man, uh, the glo Mr. Global, because 
they always do these bad things for the poor people. So so they never they don't trust it, and they say uh, like it is. So in a, in a way, they are much smarter than than people that has gone through the education system and and uh, uh, especially universities. <laughs> if you go to the university nowadays, I mean, you come out and you can't think for yourself anymore. <laughs> you are just a programmed slave. I would yeah, say in Denmark they are going to shorten many uh, many educations at the university. That's the newest uh, policy of our government, uh, our new government, uh, they want to shorten uh, university educations very broadly. So, okay, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's quite interesting also. Uh, so, so may maybe they have poor quality, but also, I mean, it can also be problematic when they become too short and, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I think but we want um, efficiency as well. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I think so too. Um, but I want to ask you also with this whole digital world brain, is it like uh, we're moving into some kind of uh, science fiction or future um, refutalization of society um, in our yes. time? Is that what's happening? Yes. I, I, I mean, they have stated this for, for a long time. Um, that's I, me, me and Carol Quigley wrote about this uh carol quigley with the the histo history professor uh that wrote tragedy and hope and he he said that the, the goal was to to have this new feudal system with uh, the banking elite at the top and uh, and uh, the rest of the people uh, down below so uh, and uh, of course Quigley didn't know how they would achieve this. Uh, he didn't wrote about technology at that time. Uh, but uh, but now we can, I, I think um, what Quigley said has proven right now. Uh, we are heading in this direction. And also, we can also see uh, uh, this fascistic uh, tendencies with uh, the merging of... Uh, uh, now un United Nations with the big uh, corporations of the world. And it's very obvious. And it's very obvious in our common agenda as well, because we we, um, we talk a lot about uh, uh, have uh, global f funding uh, compacts uh, where they want to, I mean, invite the, the big uh, players directly uh, in United Nations. Uh, philanthropic organizations and everything uh, and uh, and also use uh, the big corporations to implement the policies uh, that uh, is decided on uh, uh, the level of united nations but uh, do you do you think there is a risk that um, crit cr uh, people who would critique these um these viewpoints that we are presenting in this uh, in this talk uh, might say that um, we could uh, just be afraid of uh, technological development that that something like quantum computing and nanotechnology artificial intelligence that this is something that's going to uh, keep developing uh, maybe new groundbreaking results and that this um, development is moving faster and faster, uh, just like uh, Ray Kurzweil was uh, pointing out about the computer capacity, and that uh, we could end up sounding like people who were just afraid of change or uh, transformation of <laughs> yeah. society, new technologies. Yeah, it's a, I mean, uh, that's a, a usual thing to, to say, of course. Uh, it's all about, I mean, you, you can't fight technological uh, progress uh, but i think we have to to have a, a society that takes the, the good parts of technology and i mean um, human engineering and we have a, a lot of good things that has come out of this um, but we have to have a discussion on what do we want what kind mm -hmm. of society do we want what kind of uh, because in other i mean if we say that Oh, uh, it's like technology has a, a purpose in itself that it is driving. Uh, and I, I mean, I have um, I've written about uh, Teilhard de Chardin, uh, this uh, French uh, 
uh, Jesuit priest that uh, had these uh, theories uh, about the omega point and everything is going to towards this uh, point but uh, and it's kind of similar to the singularity theory as well uh, and and if you say that and if you have that uh, philosophy I mean it, it's like we, we can't do anything but, but I think it's wrong to say because it's someone else that says uh, we have to do you have to comply with this because it's just the way we work the wor world works um but I think we have to to actually and I know from my um experience but I mean uh, when I decide things when I when I have a, a I mean purpose with my life when I um when I want to do things I mean it, it I can create I, I can I actually do things that uh, in in other ways, you, sh you should just sit and wait, be passive, and just f let things happen, and and uh, uh, let other people decide for you. And uh, I think it's important to to know that we we have uh, there are options for us people, and 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 uh, and we have to to speak out against these uh, ideas. I think. And that also uh, brings me to to the next question because I wanted to ask you. I've, I've noticed uh, in the academic system also because I myself is I'm pretty speculative and philosoph uh, philosophical uh, just as a person also when I was uh, in the academic world. And uh, what do you think about, um, I mean, philosophy as an active discipline where you actually philosophize, you don't uh, just read uh, what ancient philosophers said, but you actually make your own new philosophical thoughts analysis and understanding some things at a more abstract level also because that's necessary also uh, when to, when you want to understand the digital world brain it's it moves to a different level of abstraction um so so what do you think is is this something that is alive in our culture or should we um make an effort actually to to re revive such an activity I think you have said it yourself. I mean, I think it's very important to to revive this, and uh, it, it was an absence of this in uh, uh, my uh, experience from the for, from the academia. Uh, it's very absent, and uh, it's not. It's like you you don't allow to to think for yourself. Everything is done beforehand. Uh, I mean, what I did was to actually starting to ask questions when uh, when we had this about climate change and i asked okay where is it coming from uh, who uh, how do you know that uh, this is a problem i wanted to check this myself and then and, and um, found out that mm, there was very few people that actually did this but because they just believe what other people had told them all the time so mm -hmm. they never uh, uh, was going to the source and, and question things for real and uh, i mean and this of course it may, made me think a lot about uh, how things work and and uh, and, uh, and also how they do have been doing in the academia is to just uh, uh, you're supposed to to write a paper and uh, I mean, in social sciences, and, and they say, oh, uh, where's your theory? You have to have a uh, theoretical framework for this. And uh, what the students do is just take some other experts, some, some uh, sociologist or whatever, and take his view and uh, put uh, on those glasses. But it's not thinking. Yeah. Yes, you're just a program. You, it's nothing there. So, so you are, you just uh, you create these good students that do the right things. And and if I mean, I questioned better, but I said, I mean, I have to have a theory about myself. I have to understand these things. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and also, I wanted to. No, I want to collect the empirical uh, uh, first. I can't have a theory before, okay, I can have some hypothesis or something like that, but it has to be mine. I can't have another ones. Uh, and also, if I have a theory, I, I mean, I have to to read all through this and and uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, analyze it thoroughly, and then eventually I can come up with a theory. So everything is backwards, uh, uh, I think, in academia yeah. nowadays. Yeah. yeah. 
yeah and it's also it's it, it happens in a quite subtle way i think so it's a uh, from i i think for many people it's not it's not obvious what you just explained it's not obvious to to many people that actually what you're learning is not to think by yourself because you're always just moving to citations and uh, you just have a system of how you move to citations and put them together in a particular way from through a formula but you actually not thinking by yourself yeah and, and everything now is about thinking the right way yeah and and it's very obvious when we have had this agenda 2030 taking its root in the university system and the school system because you can't talk against it you can't no. argue against it because it's a part of i mean we have to obey these new rules <laughs> and that's not what creates a, a, a good student and, and a critical mind at all yeah and you're also writing in your book about um, um that uh, they are I, I don't know if it was um von der Leyen who also wanted to use citizen states or no no they wanted to yeah. make um, an examination of uh ordinary people or citizens what do they think about all these uh, uh, changes that they're making they wanted to hear you know the opinions or the feedback of ordinary people and uh, can you uh, can you remember you you wrote about that yeah yeah i did yeah we had this uh, we had this summit in europe uh, uh, for uh, uh, more or less uh, like a summit for the future but for uh, um, it was like uh, we're testing for the big thing, I think. Uh, but of course, nobody knows about it. Uh, I don't know if anyone uh, know about that. Uh, we as citizens had a say in, in this. Uh, we had the, some kind of the web portal uh, that you could check into and, and uh, raise your opinions about subjects. But, but in the end, it doesn't matter. I mean, they want to know what we, I mean, we, we want some feedback. And when we get feedback, we just think, okay, how can we adjust this? Uh, people don't respond in the right manner. Um, but we, if we twist and, and fix with uh, um, the things here, we might get the, the right result in the end. Uh, it's not like, uh, okay, we have to change our policies, uh, policies about uh, what we're we doing. Uh, I mean, and, and if, you, if you raise, uh, uh, if you say something about, uh, I don't uh, really believe this in climate change, or um, I don't think this vaccines are that effective. I think it's uh, making things worse. I mean, they don't want to hear that. And uh, that's this uh, disinformation, and and that's for them is how can we uh, can we uh, uh, okay indoctrinate people better, or how can we um, stop them from spreading these uh, uh, <laughs> awful things? <laughs> so yeah. Uh, yeah, that's very perspective, and 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 uh, so and uh, they, they say in uh, United Nations now that they they uh, they want to to have the same thing. Uh, people will be able to to uh, have a say, mm, <laughs> but yeah. but I but I but I think it's more like they want to to know about what people think. It's like. Uh, they have had, I mean, before with uh, we have uh, kings and queens in the world uh, before, and uh, they didn't have the digital um, tools at that time. Um, they couldn't follow people. They had to have spies, so so they could have spies on the cafes and bars and everything to listen in on what people, uh, what do we think about the king? <laughs> and uh, uh, so I mean, they want to know, of course. But, and also, we had had, uh, I mean, in the history, we have had uh, uh, times when uh, the king has said, now people, uh, uh, now we can raise and say what we, we think. Mm? I'm so good that uh, I'm allowing this. And then people do it, and then he knows. And he knows what enemies he has and can do something about it. So <laughs> it's a, an old um method in in uh, in power politics yeah, yeah. but it, it's it's all um uh, packed into a lot of very very nice rhetoric 
also yeah. when you listen to to some of these uh, people involved in this it's also it's always very nice rhetoric just like you say we want to also uh, uh, hear what ordinary people think we want to fight poverty we want to uh, have more equal gender equality and all of this uh, and so many good words that uh, sound like we're gonna keep democracy we're gonna um... Um, it's a utopia and, and it's all the nice words that people want to hear yeah it's like uh, um, uh, be beginning a relationship with a psychopath i mean he would he would say anything to you to convince yeah. you that uh, oh it will be wonderful and uh, you will have everything and uh, and you got so much love <laughs> and then in the end we have you yeah, yeah. but it, it, understanding all of this it really takes a lot of analysis and uh, and a uh, higher um, view on, on all of these things and I I want to to uh, praise you and your book because you really are doing that work uh, or yeah you are doing that work in this book uh, there are so many details um and it's it's such an important book i want i want to end by asking you if uh, people do understand what's happening and we are moving towards this increase of centralization of power do you think there's anything we can do as ordinary people now that they're not truly listening to us um <laughs> Do you yeah, think, yeah. Is there anything we can do? Yes, I, I think. Uh, and if you are starting to realizing these things, I mean, it's very important to 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 actually meet other people uh, and uh, and discuss. Uh, uh, it's not good to to just sit for yourself and and think about it because it gets overwhelming. And um, so I think it's important to 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 meet people. And I do a lot of a uh, lot now. Uh, with my books, of course, uh, I, I um, get invited to to uh, meetings and and stuff, and and um, and where you meet people, and and uh, and they are very warm and humane, and uh, they have a, another view of the world, and and together, uh, and and in that environment, it comes new ideas, and uh, because I think we have to uh, now formulate uh, another view of the world another worldview uh, that is uh, taking care of. It's, uh, it's about the hu human us humans mm -hmm. and and uh, mm -hmm. uh, the creative force that we have everything that uh, defines us and to work for that not for us to become robots <laughs> uh, because it's like um, i think a lot of this is an illusion we have an illusion of power uh, that is uh, working against us and uh, and it's so we just have to to meet people now and starting to discuss and uh, and talk about the future we want for real what, and, what is it that you think is an illusion uh i think power i mean it, it's a uh, they tell you a lot of things that will happen and uh, they have these uh, computer models. Uh, so so we build, it's a management by fear all the time. So, uh, but in the end, they, they can't do anything, I think. And, and if, if we if we are money, money, it will not work anymore. Mm. So because... we can actually escape the, the global uh, world brain? Yeah, <laughs> I think so. You think so? <laughs> yeah, uh, we, ha we have to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but uh, thank you so much, Jakob, for the yeah. interview and your book. And we will place a link beneath this talk uh, where people can find your book if they want to buy it. Yeah, thank you very much. It was a pleasant uh, discussion. <laughs> and, uh, thank you. Thank you.